Hello and welcome to Ben's Addiction. In the past two months, I have been actively working on my 1998 R170 Mercedes SLK 230. And if you look at it right now in this situation, pretty much every electrical module part fuse box is exposed. Uh, these cars are getting old and there are lots of fault codes and electrical issues coming up. So I told myself, why not make a video on every single module, fuses, relays, and component that I can see on this car that can help other Mercedes-Benz owners to solve their issue. I'm also going to share with you some of the wiring diagram that might be uh, of a help because some of these uh, modules are tricky and I know you will be needing the diagram to be able to diagnose your car properly. So the K40 relay, which is very important over here and needs to be looked at when any electrical issue uh, happened on your Mercedes is over here. Just need to uh, use this clip over here to release it. So as you can see, this is the list of the relays in the K40 enclosure. So there are a bunch of fuses like these ones, air pump fuse, fuel pump fuse, horn fuse, and then we have some relays, fuel pump relay, fanfare horn relay, traction system relay, air pump relay, and very important here, there is the engine circuit 87 relay. Okay, let's start with the very important relay that can cause many issues and every single electrical issue on the M111 engine can be traced back to K40 relay. So it basically consists of five relays. So basically we have air pump relay on the left hand side. The second we have fuel pump relay. You see it's working uh, and making noise, pressurizing the system. The third one is the traction system relay. The fourth one is the engine circuit 87 relay. And last one is the horn relay. So basically W210 also has this K40 relay without the compressor relay. There is another relay over here. This is the Vario roof pump uh, relay. It's very also important. Also, there is a relay behind the main fuse box. If you remove this plastic cover from it, you'll see that there is a single relay over there and it is related to the convenience module. So it's basically the convenience module relay. When I scan my SLK class, it shows me that I have nine modules on this car. So in order not to get lost, we start from here. Instrument cluster, multifunction, control unit, ASR, transmission, ECU, airbag, brake assist, barrier roof, and central locking. The second module we've got here is the ECU engine module or the ECU, also very important. The live information in the ECU you get many many information but to sum it up this is the type of information you get so any of these uh, sensors or components being faulty you get a check engine light on the third module we have is the well-known asr and this is the communication line can line of the asr module very important to check if you have that uh, dreaded uh, communication problem with the ASR. This is the ASR module information. Uh, so you see the brake switch also play a very important role here as well as the four speed sensors. So very, very common to have a failure of the uh, speed sensors on one of the wheels and you will get the ASR light coming up. So 
uh, it's actually not a bad idea to replace these after 120K or after 20 years. They are very prone to fail. Not very related to what we are going to talk, but the, the control unit for the fan is over here, as you can see. So very important if you have problem with your fan unit. The next module that we're going to talk is the brake assist uh, module that you can see it's over here. The can signals, as you can see over here, the white and green as mentioned. This is the information you get from the BAS module. So if your uh, brake switch is faulty, you definitely will have your uh, BAS ASR uh, light on your dash. The next module is the central locking module which is this bad boy usually uh, is faulty on most of the Mercedes of this old and uh, uses this shield over here. This is the casing for it and lives under, uh, beside the spare tire on the right hand side of the trunk. So here is the PSC information uh, that you would get. Uh, lock interior switch, open interior switch, door contact switches and rear window defroster switch. Okay, if you need to access your airbag module, you don't need to rip anything except the little plastic over here. And you can access it. It's lying over here. It's probably doable removing it, but you probably better off removing the uh, your head unit to be able to fully access it. So you can even remove the connector by uh, pulling this tab over here. There is no information in the airbag module, so we skip that. The next very important module over here is the transmission control module. You need to check this for oil contamination because the connector of the five speed usually leaks into the wiring harness. And as you can see over here, we got a little uh, that situation as well. You see this harness is greasy and shiny. It leaks into this module over here. So if you look at your passenger side, remove the carpet, it's behind this metal shield over here. The electronic transmission control module on this car doesn't have live information. So that's all I can show you at the moment. So over here, uh, beside the main fuse box in the engine compartment, you have the comfort module. It's the window def defrosters, the windshield wiper, speed signals, and the dome lamp. These are the uh, all the information you can get from the uh, comfort module. The comfort module also actively communicates with the PSC module that I showed you before. This one over here is the Vario Roof uh, module. You see there are many, many wires going to it and very important. And over here we have the uh, CAN signal wires, the green and white going into it. The Vario Roof module contains information of the uh, Vario Roof, the convertible top. Uh, it definitely needs the power windows information, so the switches inside the doors, they should be known to be closed or open. And also some of the uh, speed signal, very important. So if you're one of your speed uh, sensors are faulty, your roof might not work because it might think that your speed is more than five kilometers. The temperature of the hydraulic unit, uh, the actuation of different uh, limit switches, of course, definitely. This is the maxi fuse, which is a 40 amp fuse. It actually powers up two of the fuses, the fuel pump fuse and the horn fuse. So basically it's a main fuse. The first one is a traction control fuse, very important. The second one is the fuel pump fuse, very important. Third one, engine circuit 87. Four is air pump. And fifth one is the horn fuse. So basically this is the heart of electrical system of Mercedes-Benz 2.3 liter compressor. And it's also uh, shared between W210 as well, uh, some of the models with uh, 2.3 and 2.0 compressor engines. And if you do not have your sticker for the main uh, fuse box, I can show you what they are from number one, 
Number one is telephone and garage door opener. Number two is control unit airbag. Number three is indicator safety restraint system and child seat recognition system. Number four is wiper motor. Number five is radio. Number six is exterior mirror adjustment left and right. Number seven is soft top control indicator and electronic transmission control park and reverse lock number eight is again radio number nine is roof light horn and anti-theft alarm number 10 is tempo mat or cruise control number 11 is ignition 12 is washer liquid heater and heater for the washer nozzle number 13 is diagnostic socket 38 pin power 13 is diagnostic socket 38 pin type 14 is the sound booster 15 is automatic heating system auxiliary water pump as well 16 17 and 18 are spares 19 which is over there the 40 amp is power window front and 20 power windows rear 21 and 22 are spares 23 is the boot light and center locking very important 24 pneumatic control unit and rear window defroster 25 is the hydraulic unit which is the hydraulic pump 30 and 34 are the heating seats left and right i do not have those 31 is the cigarette lighter 32 is the viper washer pump and headlamp flasher 33 is automatic heating system or tempmatic 34 is seat heater again as i mentioned 35 is radio frequency remote control hazard warning instrument cluster automatic heating system 36 is automatic heating system 37 is circulating air instrument cluster and radio frequency remote control and automatic heating system this is the vehicles with right hand side uh, steering this is the fog, fog lamp left and right number two is rear fog lamp number three is right front parking lamp and right tail lamp Number four is left front parking lamp. Number five is left high beam. Number six is license plate lamp, instrument cluster illumination, automatic headlamp range control. Number seven is right high beam and high beam indicator lamp. Number eight is left low beam. Number 11 is not used. And number 12 is the reverse lamp, turn signal lamp, rear view mirror, dimming control, parking aid control. For left hand steer cars, number one is not used, number two is stop lamp switch and cruise control, number three is right high beam, high beam indicator lamp, number four is the reverse lamp, turn signal lamp and rear view mirror dimming control. Number five is left high beam. Number six is right low beam. Number seven is front right parking light, front right side marker. Number eight is left low beam. Number nine is left fog lamp and right fog lamp. Number 10 is front left parking light. Number 11 is license plate lamp, instrument cluster illumination and automatic headlamp range control and number 12 is rear fog lamps uh, unlike many other cars the can signal wires are not twisted but they are shielded this type of wiring and it's basically white and green Based on this module diagram that I have on my WIS uh, for the CAN bus wiring, which is very important, we've got the legend on the right hand side. So uh, these are pretty much, if you look at the uh, Z37, 
three and Z thirty seven two. Those are the connecting points for all the CAN highs and CAN lows. So basically, we can connect up these uh, to each other together uh, ourselves and skip some of the faulty wiring. Okay, guys, I hope this video can help you with diagnosing the electrical issue of your SLK. If you have any more question, please put it in the comment section so everyone else can also use it. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing. Have a great day. Enjoy your Mercedes. Bye. So.